Pinball Productions presents The One, a feature motion podcast. Written and directed by Adam Zof. Starring Stacey Roberts Steele, Ted Welch, and Charlie Baker. For a full list of credits and to enjoy and contribute to funding other Pinball Productions, visit pinballproductions.com. In a drugstore makeup aisle, Jane Willis, 30s, applies and wipes off countless lipsticks. She notices a super together Kardashian type Lila watching. I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I am. I'm just trying to match the shade of the stupid Instagram influencer. See, that's my friend. Oh, love her, style-wise. I mean, her opinions on vaccinations are highly irresponsible. Oh my God, you're wearing the shade. W- which is it? It's a blend. A blend, of course. Which two Four. do you- Four? Strawberry my face in a pillow, like my rosebud, double peach attrition. Not very subtle. And fuck me hard red. Wow, just coming right out with it on that one, huh? I don't see them here. Because this is a drugstore. Why are you buying your makeup in a drugstore? Because Sephora doesn't sell z Lila looks Jane over. Are you judging me? It's okay, I know I'm not very... I'm looking for positives to build on. I like your boyfriend jeans. Where'd you get them? They're not boyfriend jeans. They're just jeans. They belong to a man. I used to know. And sleep with. I'm sorry. Let me make you feel better. Here, use this. Age-defying face cream. It's super basic, but it works. You'll love it. That doesn't really make me feel... Wait, are you like my age? Um, no. I'm 19. I use it so I don't have a problem later. But it can help you to, you know, repair. Gotcha. Can I ask, what exercise are girls doing for their asses to make them that way? Surgery. Lila walks away, flaunting an impossible ass. Fuck. (laughs) Hello? New York Times bestseller! Fuck! At the register, Jane buys two jars of face cream, ice cream, tequila, and... I'm gonna need a carton of the most dangerous cigarettes you have. Live. Love, laugh, learn. Learn to live, love to laugh, laugh to learn, live to love. Don't frown, because then no one can fall in love with your smile. Give yourself the present of a new future. How do you find the one? By becoming the one. Take it from this real life customer who is real. No one knows exactly how the prophecy of the one works. No one knows what's in water or clouds, but it's in there. In this book, The One by Jane Willis. Love, love's in there. In her office, Jane's book agent, Camille, presses pause. What do you think? You're speechless. I know, it's very powerful. I'm sad inside. The breakup, of course. No, I mean, yes. The breakup, but this ad is sad. You can't possibly plan to put this out into the world. Plan? No, it's already playing in 11 cities. What? We have to advertise your book tour. Book tour? Jane, your book is touching people in a way that's truly special. And now you get to touch them back. I don't want to touch the kind of people who would be touched by this book. Do you know how many copies we've sold so far? Look, money isn't the... You're a millionaire. Fuck you. It's true. Before our cut and production costs and taxes, it's made a million dollars. Oh, so this isn't that big of a deal then. Yet. We just shipped 50 times the copies, and we are putting the one and your face everywhere. You are touring the 9th to 20th biggest markets in the United States. And if that goes well, you could be on the Drew Barrymore show. I love Drew Barrymore. Everyone loves Drew Barrymore. She tells people to buy your book. His pages might as well be made of money. You could get your own talk show. Don't you want your own talk show? You want your own talk show. I'm not a fan of traveling. I've seen the world on Instagram. This is all so overwhelming. Why the fuck did I blog after a breakup? Why can't I just eat ice cream and watch Gilmore Girls and drink Chardonnay intravenously like a normal person? You had a gift to give the world. I had a load of bullshit that I vomited onto the internet when I was hammered. Viral vomit that I scooped up in my hands and turned to gold. Do you have crystals in your purse? What? Of course I have crystals in my purse. 
Take them out. Take my hands. Dear universe, please guide Jane on her journey. If I hear the word journey one more time. On her journey to touch those she's touched so that they may touch her back. Are you putting energy into the crystals? Because I don't feel it. There. That's better. And universe, please make Jane a huge success so she can show her ex-boyfriend. This isn't about him. Of course not. So she can make five million actual dollars in her bank account. Buy things with it, catch. Really? Really. And be on Drew Barrymore's show, which her ex-boyfriend would see and know he made a huge mistake. There, don't you feel better? Not really. Great, I'm emailing your tickets. At home, Jane's bedroom is scattered with clothes, shoes, and bathroom products. She puts a single pair of socks in her suitcase. There. Progress. Oh, shit. Alexa, can you bring a vibrator on a plane? I have found two articles. It's perfectly fine to bring a vibrator on a plane and why you should never bring your vibrator on a plane. Mixed messages, Alexa. At the airport, Jane sees the x-ray machine detail every item passing through it. Don't freak out, Jane. Don't freak out. A man in front of Jane has to remove an electric razor and turn it on. Oh, Jesus, son of a fuck. Excuse me, excuse me. Got a water ball I have to throw away. Jane hustles to a garbage can, reaches inside her bag, and covertly tosses her vibrator in. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, uh, never mind. I don't need to use the garbage after all. I'm just gonna be going through security now. Here's my ticket and license. You sure you didn't forget anything? Nope. All set. Aboard the flight, Jane looks at her ex Todd's LinkedIn page. Drinks? Drinks? I'll take a margarita. Miss... This is the plane. Chili's 2 is back in the airport. Wine is fine. Any kind. Getting her wine, Jane notices the woman next to her is reading the one. Jane yakes the in-flight magazine out and buries her face in it. Don't worry, I'm not one of those people who talks to strangers on airplanes. Yeah, me neither. And you've got your book, so I'll leave you to it. Book? Please, this is fucking garbage. This is like a shit sandwich where the covers of the bread and the pages are the shit. It can't be that bad. Oh, it's that bad. But it's like, so is love, right? So I figure fight shit with shit. I mean, what am I going to do? Give up on love? Even though I want to. Dear God, do I want to. Relationship troubles? Hmm. Other than men are idiot fucking children with no idea what women have to go through to even walk out the fucking house each day. I hear that. We had the kids. Aging matters more. Get paid less. Now we got to deal with big titty hoe bags waist training themselves into balloon animals. I was thinking about trying that. Don't. I did end of the day, you take it off and you fart for 15 minutes straight. And speaking of assholes. Speaking of assholes? They want to fuck us in them. And it's like, I gotta poop out of there for the next 40 years, man. I can't have my shit falling out sideways when I get older. Gotta, gotta keep your shit straight. Yes. Yes, you do. But the thing is, I want fucking love. Simple ass love. Real love. Not ass love. Right. Love in your heart. Not in your ass. Is it too much to fucking ass to find one motherfucker who isn't a total asshole to be watching Netflix with? It's really not. And that's why I buy stupid shit like this book. I'll fucking put energy out into the universe. I'll shove crystals up my chakra if it gets one decent person to come into my life. So you like the book? It makes me feel better. I don't know. I guess. Maybe. Gotcha. I like you. What's your name? Lonnie. Lonnie, I'm Sharon. Pleased to meet you. I'll shut the fuck up so you can go back to online stalking your ex. I wasn't... Please. We all gotta have our bullshit, girl. Online stalking, trashy books, Etsy some shit, whatever. They got their fantasy football bullshit. A woman needs her bullshit. Sharon puts on her headphones and goes back to Jane's book. Fight shit with shit. Dating app it is. Jane opens her phone and downloads a dating app. Simpatico. Potential matches come up. Even work seven miles up. Maybe you are down there. Take your empty? Yes, and a vodka. And keep them coming. Way to get with the program, honey. Later, Ola. as the plane bumps up and down, Ola. a sleeping Ola. Jane's thumb presses Ola. Ola on guy after guy. Ola. Ola. Want to welcome you to Philadelphia, city of brotherly love, or sisterly love, whatever you're into. Time is 8.42 in the a.m. Ola. <laughs> what? Ola. Who? Ola. Ola. What? Ola. 3,681 matches? Holy shit. Ola. That's not morning language. I'm on LA time.
Hola. Jane exits a cab to a huge line of women outside a bookstore. Yep, never mind. Actually, can you take me back to the... Okay, all set. On your way. Hey, it's her. Jane, hi. Hi. You are not a fucking fraud. You are not a fucking fraud. You are not a fucking fraud. Displays of the one copies everywhere. Jane sits at a table with a pile of Sharpie markers. Oh, oh, wow. Uh, (laughs) I can't believe it. It's really you. (laughs) Me neither. I see you brought your book. Actually, uh, they made us buy one here. Well, you did, I suppose, so you could make more money. I I didn't. I wasn't aware of... Oh, no, no, no. I'll just, um, read it again. (laughs) It's so good. (laughs) Thank you. Who should I make it out to? Uh, Heather. That's H-E-A-T-H-E-R. So, just Heather. People could spell it a different way. How? H-E-E-T-H-A-R. Heather? They stare at each other. Jane goes to sign and realizes she's forgotten cursive. Haven't really used cursive in a while. Used to texting. (laughs) Jane gives up and starts writing block letters. You can't sign it like that. That's not a signature. Jane scribbles a line with flair and shuts the book. So nice to meet you. A hot mess approaches the table. People tell me I'm exactly like you. Thank you? Here's my book. Great. Who should I... Wait, this is your book. That's what I said. Undaunted, the unauthorized story of a bad bitch diva, which is me, I figured you'd give it to your publisher. Unauthorized? But you wrote... (sighs) Never mind. I can't just give it to my publisher. That's not how it works. Make it twerk. I, uh, I would need to read it, so maybe leave. It here, I mean. Understood. You're a busy woman. I just followed you on Facebook. Follow me back. Oh, I have to sign the book, so maybe later. You a boss, bitch. Take a break. Take out your phone. I lost it. What's your number? I'll call it. Jane whips out her phone. There it is. Follow you back. I have a question. Which Disney princess is your favorite? Um, I always like Dumbo, actually. Mine's Ariel. She's the little mermaid. I'm not really familiar with... She's beautiful. She just wants to be part of our world. I noticed you unfollowed me. I can't believe you would treat your protege this way. Look, I'm sorry. I don't really have any interest in your book. But I don't really have any interest in my book either. You know what? Fuck you, Miss Queen of Borders Bookstore. This isn't a Borders. Borders went out of business. Fine. We're authors without Borders. Whatever, bitch. Well, that was fun. Guess I'll just head to the hotel and kill myself. Um, Miss Willis, the microphone is a go for the reading downstairs. Reading? Downstairs, a hundred women wait for Jane to speak. I'm gonna kill Camille. Okay, Jane. No one ever died from public speaking, except Jesus and Martin Luther King and a whole bunch of other people. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I guess we're really doing this. The One by, well, me. The Mystics, Buddha, Gandhi, Einstein, Dr. Oz, The Energies, Light, air, and love. For millennia, the mystics have searched for the power to harness the energies. But little did they know, it was always right there, inside them. Because the key to finding something is to know you already have it. You are in love the moment you decide you are. You have the power to say, hey me, I'm in love now. Can you feel it? Love, inside you, there, now you can. It's as simple as that. Um, okay, I guess I'll keep going. I was alone, brokenhearted. My boyfriend of three years had dumped me. He said we didn't fit together anymore. Facing a lifetime of being alone and then dying alone. I was without love. But it was then I discovered the secret to love, to finding the one. I decided to simply be in love. I was the one. Knowing I had already found what I was searching for, I knew then that I could find it. By being the one, I would find the one. There were two ones is what I'm saying, I guess. Wow, okay, you guys are into it. Uh, Chapter one, harnessing the power of the stars. In her hotel room, Jane downs a mini bar bottle of scotch 
as she pours another into a glass. So, how did it go? Oh, just checking to see if I still have an ass considering I spent the last two hours lying it off. Why do I not remember this thing being that full of shit? In this new printing, we might have added a few things. Might have? We might have. Did. Didn't you already might have did enough when you turned my stupid blog into this, this... Book. It's technically a book. <laughs> Fuck. Hola. This stupid simpatico app. Hola. How do you turn the fucking notifications off? You're looking for love again. No. I got drunk on the plane and the bumping. I kept pressing the button. You meant you manifested it. Whatever. I got 3,287 matches. You're really putting it out there, Jane. Did you put your boobies on the app? No. What? It's a thing people do. Other people than me. Oh, oh my God. I have the best idea. I hate when you have an idea. This is your follow-up book. Your search for true love among men from across the country. Like the Bachelorette. Go on. During your book tour, you look across the country for love, and if you happen to fuck a lot of guys, then great. What? Like on the show. People like sex stuff. Experiment. Suck a lot of penises. Oh, maybe get into anal. Camille, I I can't have my shit falling out sideways when I'm older. There's exercises you can do to tighten things up after. I've heard. Can we not talk about stretched out assholes? Right. It's not about ass love. It's about finding proper love, which you want, right? Jane considers. Later, she's opened up the Simpatico app. Dating through a phone. How bad could it be? You have received 304 moments. What's a moment? Click to expand. Ah, dicks. I've received dicks, simpatico. Nothing but, okay, here's a guy smiling. And he's in a wheelchair. That's fine. I would totally date a guy in a wheelchair. He's handsome and he's bound to have character. Click to read message. Hi, Jane, wanna fuck? Shit. Wait, how does? Up pops a pic of wheelchair guy with a dildo strapped to his mouth. Oh, oh, okay. That's actually kind of smart, but also gross. All right, let's weed out some of these assholes. Oh, you love bacon. Good things are good, huh? Are bad things bad? Sunglasses, sunglasses. How about a ski mask? Maybe take a picture in the fucking dark. Guys, I have to know you own at least one fucking shirt. Enough. I don't need a man this bad. In bed. Damn it. I'm sort of practiced with my fingers. It's like I'm fucking nine again. She picks up her phone. Technically, it's a work assignment. Jesus. I can feel the weight of all the dicks. Okay, find nearest match. Don't be a douchebag. Up pops a shirtless Danny, 30s, and very in shape, in sunglasses, and leaning on a Mustang. Shit. Danny is five feet away. What? Jane looks around, then down. In the hotel bar, Jane looks across at Danny who doesn't see her. Well, he hasn't sent me a dick pic yet. Maybe he's a nice guy. And there it is. Damn it, Danny. Wait, this dick is Latino mixed? Fuck it. We gotta get this show on the road. I'm across the bar. Send. Please don't murder me. Danny walks over, stopping to tilt the TV, showing sports highlights towards Jane. Hi there. This pic isn't your dick. It's an approximation. I'm a professional athlete, kind of well-known. Use my own sausage, that's going to end up online. A highlight of Danny as a pro baseball player shows on the TV. Oh, wow. That's me on TV. That's such a coincidence. Were you sitting in this bar waiting for a girl to recognize you off the TV so you could sleep with her? No. That's a home run, by the way. Relax. I don't care that you play baseball, or whatever it's called. It is called baseball. I'm a four-time All-Star. I said I didn't care. I just need to know you won't kill me and leave me in the room. Why would I do that? Good answer. Let's go. Back in Jane's hotel room. (sighs) I'm sorry, can we stop for a second? I'm a little distracted. Your tattoos. Is that Tweety Bird with a giant heart on? Oh, no. That's a baseball bat. But it's supposed to be his... His dick. Yeah. I don't even know if Tweety has a dick. So I gave him a baseball bat dick. Got it. Um, can I ask, what's the theme going on with all these? Nothing. I just get whatever pops in my head. So, you're into irrational, impulsive decisions, and I've let your penis inside me. Glad you wore a condom. It's not like that. Every time I get a game-winning hit, I get a stupid tattoo. Started with this, my rookie year. 
Slimer from Ghostbusters driving a monster truck? Yeah, two-run double. This one, home run to hit in extra innings. I can't even begin to guess. Shave Chewbacca and a cowboy hat. Ah, okay. I get it now. I guess. You're still hard. Yep. You're a good fit, by the way. Thanks. May I? Please do. <sighs> That's the good stuff. Listen, I gotta get up early, gotta rise and grind. Why am I not surprised you said rise and grind? Got a baseball match at 9 a.m.? It's a game, not a match. And no, but I, I do have to rise and grind. Got some important stuff to grind. I'm sure you do. You can save the speech. I'm exhausted. Have a good one. Danny throws on his clothes and backs out, feeling slightly used. You're listening to CHX 97.5, Charlotte's number one inspirational and smooth jazz station. And home of the Carolina Panthers. Radio host Rosemary, a cigarettes and whiskey 57 years old, has slammed coffee in this room since it was decorated in 1993. She looks at Jane's book. Well, look at this tampon commercial, would you? The one. Perfect title. Why fucking date when you could just buy love, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, my publisher told me this was supposed to be good? Nice, I mean? Relax. We're on the same team here, chick. Rosemary pulls up a background shade of a sunset revealing. Got my own books, CDs, DVDs, this. Two storage units and my spare bedroom full of this crap. Are those cassette tapes? You're goddamn right they are. Hell, I'll do eight tracks if you special order. Gotta cater to my audience. My demo settles in at about mm, 66 years old but an active 66. We're both targeting the singles, divorcees, and just plain losers. But I'm also swimming in the deep end, widows and widowers. That's so sad. I find burying a loved one really softens up a man's testicles, pussifies them. Let me carve out some of that male golf cash while I'm bringing in the female figuring moolah as well. I mean, they're gonna waste their money on something. Don't you think that's a little cynical? Good one. You almost had me. I was going to say, take notes. But it looks like you've already learned what it took me four marriages to. I'm afraid to ask. Love is a fucking waste of time lie that kicks you in your stomach's balls until you shit your sense of hope out and get real. That was even worse than I could have possibly imagined. But hey, might as well make a few bucks off the saps who still believe. Am I right? I think you may be insane. All right. Let's get that energy up. You're about to go live nationally to three million people. Three million? Yeah, three million. Satellite radio is a fucking fad, all right? Terrestrial, the earth, ain't going nowhere, baby. Now put your headphones on and make that attitude as perky as those tits of yours and let's sell some bullshit. Hello, friends and lovers. It's your Rosemary, welcoming you to another episode filled with sharing growing and being there for one another through the magic of radio. Terrestrial radio that is never, ever going away. I have a very special guest today, author and relationship expert. Please welcome to our little powwow, Jane Willis. Um, hi, Rosemary, it's- Rosemary mutes their mics. Start talking some bullshit. I have five goddamn hours to fill. You know, I've read your book and I found it fascinating. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I wrote it from the heart, and I'm so glad it's found its way to yours. So wonderful. Let's take a call, shall we? You're on with Rosemary and our special guest, Jane. Hello, Rosemary. About nine years ago, my husband Curtis died falling off a ladder. He's with the angels now. Tell me, do you have a Rosemary Eternal Flame candle? Those come in a package of three. At her Charlotte book signing, woman after woman buys Jane's book as she signs them. It was so nice meeting you. Love is bullshit. I'm a prostitute. Thanks for your money. A store worker wheels out a rack of the one t-shirts. What the fuck? In the back of the store with mountains of just arrived the one merchandise. Do you love it? No, I don't love it, Camille. Little bullshit crystals and bookmarks? That was supposed to be it. Not t-shirts and jackets and there's a fucking board game now? Players get heart points on their journey to- I don't give a shit about the rules. 
Is that perfume? I approximated your smell. It's actually not bad. $79.99? Did you know perfume costs like 50 cents to make? Really? This is ridiculous. It's branding, Jane. The one isn't just a book. It's a feeling. It's hope. We can sell. You know what? It doesn't matter this is all bullshit. Because so is love. Just like that sad, sad woman from the radio says. I thought you'd be inspired by Rosemary's branding. Stop saying branding. Her brand is like if a trip to the dentist and a pack of cigarettes gave birth to a grandmother who told you everything sucks. Jane, you're going to listen to a person who lives in Charlotte. You live in Los Angeles. Do you know who else lives in Los Angeles? Drew Barrymore. Do you know who was on Drew's news this morning? You're lying. I am, but you could be very soon. Now, you love Drew Barrymore, don't you? Yes. So we know love is real. And guess who just moved up to number seven on the New York Times bestseller list? Me? You know who that gets you closer to? Drew. Can we be happy like Drew then? Fine. Back in her room, Jane opens up the Simpatico app. All right, first things first. The dicks have to go. Delete all moments. Okay, find phrases. Sexy, baby, you up? Rise and grind. Found 872 instances. Delete. Now a few tests. First, a makeup-free selfie. Send. On to the cheaters. I will go through your phone. If you think that's crazy, I think you're a whore. Send message. Poll question. Do you want to see my tits? A, now. B, eventually. Results? 352 votes for now? Think, idiots. Delete it. From Danny. Nice pick. Sure thing, Tweety. Now for the lightning round. No cosplaying. No acoustic guitars. No guys in those weird colored business shirts with white collars. No guys with a snake. No chain wallets. No old guys in fitted jeans. No super old guys in any jeans. Bald guys. Bald guys are in. It's just hair and not reflective of your personality or life choices, but no bald hipsters. Down to 957. Making progress. Welcome to Atlanta, where the players play. Jane walks into the next bookstore and is immediately cornered by a woman with peacock feathers in her hair. Jane Willis, you are my spirit animal. I have read your tome 57 times, digested it into my soul. I am your book now. Oh, wow, you're extravagant. I quit my job as a yogi slash singer-songwriter slash professional closet organizer to pursue your teachings full time. My teachings? Your gospel needs to be spread, and I am here to serve you. I have set up a seminar. You are the guest of honor. You will be fitted. Like the goddess of knowledge you are. I really just want to sign some books, get lunch at the Panera across the street, and go back to my hotel. Dine on the energy of your sisters. The bookstore no longer had capacity. So we are the best Western conference room next door. Feel our cycles. Closer together. There. Our carry and reply may commence. I have one. Why am I wearing a sari? Because you're a priestess. Gotcha. Hi, I've actually already found my the one. Uh, my question is more about how to get them to come back. See, we were together for quite a while and everything seemed perfect. But then I would look in his eyes and he was disinterested. I'm sorry to hear that. I decided to give him some space, but one day I woke up and the door was open and he was gone and I tried everything. You called? Texted? Well, I put flyers up. Flyers? Oh God, she's talking about her. Are you talking about a pet? My cat, Oswald. That is correct. Where did you find these people? We have a Reddit devoted to non-traditional healing and conspiracy theory. Jane signs books. Namaste. Yeah, sure. Namaste. Jane grabs another book. Who do I make it out to? Tweety Bird. Jane looks up to Danny. Oh, fuck. Danny follows Jane down the street. Why don't you tell me you were a famous author? Because I'm not a famous author. I'm just a person who ended up in a thing. You're selling yourself short. This book is great. Who read it to you? That's not nice. I saw it in the airport on the way out of Philly. Oh, hey, there's that chick I ba- Banged? Made love to. Ew, that's worse. Jane. Your book has changed my life. You cannot be serious right now. 
but I am. I realized I've been living my entire adult life just going through a series of unimportant physical encounters, completely missing out on the power the universe has to offer me. Danny, it's a bunch of... it's a bunch of bullshit. Love isn't bullshit. Love is real. And your book says if you believe you're in love, love will come into your life. But that doesn't even make sense. Seems to make sense to me. Look at us. It's fate. Jane, you're my... Don't say it. The one. Motherfucker. Look, fate is bullshit and I'm not interested. We haven't even gotten to know each other. Why couldn't we work out? Um, you admitted you'll basically have sex with anyone. I did also read about this term, slut-shaming. How many women have you slept with? Four or five. Really? Hundred. Four or five hundred. Or a little lower, but probably a little higher. Right there. Disqualified. This is my hotel. Goodbye, Danny. Our hotel. I'm in town to play the Braves. Well, I'll just switch hotels then. I'm not going to switch hotels because I'm not going to go through life as a woman that switched hotels because of a man. You switch. I can't switch. The team booked it. Fine. We just have to make it through the elevator ride. What floor can I push for you? 17. Fuck! Just go to your room and I'll go to mine. Guess we're neighbors. You did this on purpose. I wouldn't even know where to start to do this on purpose. You're right. You're too dumb. It was nice meeting you, Danny. I'm going behind this door now. But the door isn't just a door. The door is everything. Everything is between us. Looks like a door to me. Here behind the everything if you need anything. Jane, buy a fucking vibrator already. Jane goes to the bathroom, and as she grabs toilet paper, she takes the roll off, revealing a smooth, round, silver toilet paper holder, about six inches long. You're not married. No girlfriend. Won't stalk me. You even have a job. You're like the perfect man. Not at all sad that I said that about a toilet paper holder. Let's give it a shot. Slowly lower, Jane. Oh, we have insertion. Little cold, but good fit. Let's give it a stroke. I think we're on to something. Yeah, a little bit faster. Mm, oh, okay, that's not bad at all. Yeah, yeah. Spilt a hold a roll of toilet paper, Jane. Hey, Jane! You okay? In a towel, Jane opens the front door to Danny, also in a towel. You all right? I heard a loud banging. I wasn't banging. I was just, um, exercising. In a towel? Like naked squats or something? Something like that. Cool. Well, long as you're okay. Jane's eyes scan Danny's impressive athlete body. Oh, fuck it. She kisses Danny. This is just a physical thing. I get it. I like you. You don't like me. You're just using me. Whose room? Yours. I need to use the bathroom. Danny whips off his towel and Superman's into bed. Jane goes to wash her hands and sees a toothpaste, hair, spit, snot, blob in the sink. Dear God. Jane comes out, her face in a grossed out blank stare. You have resting bitch face right now. I'm sorry? I was just joking. That my face looked like a bitch. I didn't mean it like, uh, I'm sorry. Would you like to know why I had bitch face? Your sink looks like a chipmunk gave birth in it. Yeah, they got made, so I just throw them a 20. Except I saw it, and your bodily fluids, and now you want me to just let those all around me? <laughs> no, well, a different one. But you're uh, kind of killing the boner vibe. Do you think my vagina is like Niagara Falls? You always make such a big deal out of everything. <laughs> Incredible. You know, I met a Sharon on a plane recently, and she's right. Being a woman is just harder. We have to get manicures and pedicures, and our pussies have to be waxed, and our eyebrows have to be perfectly arched. If there was a fucking horn growing out of our heads, we'd have to have it perfectly buffed and bejeweled. Every time I look at makeup, I think, fuck, why did that first bitch have to grind up a rose and smear it on her cheeks or whatever? To be a woman is just to jump through 50 different hoops and to be judged if you miss even one. And what's our reward? Our looks mattering more, aging matters more, having to have babies, less pay for the same work, and having sex and love and having a family held hostage by men. We don't have resting bitch face. We have resting look at this asshole who won't even clean a sink to fuck me face. Wow, so what should I do? Clean the sink, light a goddamn candle maybe. You gotta make the fuck fuzzy. Make the fuck fuzzy? There's a scenario in your head where you get laid, but you need to make this the scenario in a woman's head where she gets laid. Nice, inviting, get our mind vagina wet and... Your real vagina does too. 
That makes sense. Just, that makes sense? Yeah, makes sense. Thanks for telling me. This is going to help me be a better person. What's that supposed to mean? What I meant it to? I'm confused. Me too. Do you want to just sit on the bed and talk? Watching a game on TV. So basically you wear pajamas and hit a ball with a stick. And you've done this how long? Since I was nine. You know, I do know partly what it's like to be a woman. The aging and it mattering more. I'm not going to be good at my job for much longer. Oh, so you'll be worthless like me. I, I didn't mean it that way. I meant things getting more serious. Having to figure out what you want in life. You play a child's game. But I'm 33. My athletic ability is dying. That's why I was in the bar with my highlights on. I don't hit that many home runs these days. So you have like a biological clock? Your sport eggs won't drop into your uterus glove anymore? That's not the best metaphor, but sure. <laughs> metaphor? You didn't think I knew the word metaphor, did you? You know, you can be a little condescending. Condescending? Ooh. You think I'm dumb because I hit a ball with a stick. It doesn't make you a scientist. It doesn't not make me a scientist. Name one scientist. Einstein. It was in your book. It? He. He was in my book. Oh, my book. You're right. I was totally condescending to you, and, like, you weren't even a dick about telling me. Yeah, well, it's cool. You know, it's getting kind of fuzzy in here. Mind vagina? Getting pretty wet. Early in the morning, Jane quietly sneaks out. As she passes the bathroom, she notices Danny has cleaned it sometime during the night. You son of a bitch. Welcome to Indianapolis, famous for uh, something, I'm sure. In another bookstore, a huge cake with candles reads New York Times number one bestseller. Blow them out. Thank you. Thank you so much. Back in her hotel room, Jane looks at a huge bouquet of roses. Camille, they're so nice. Thank you. Oh, of course, darling. What are you talking about? The flowers. Oh, that's what he was doing. Phew. <laughs> so glad he's not a stalker. Congratulations, Danny. How did... He contacted me off the book cover. And that's all you needed to give him my personal information? Jane, that's not important. What is important is that you are numero uno or thorough in all of New York bestseller listo. Advice, how-to, and miscellaneous category. Still counts. How does it feel? It feels like I'm still wondering why you gave a guy you thought might stalk me my information. I have a sense about these things. He seems like a catch. Plus, I googled him and holy shit is he haunt. And an idiot. But also the first thing. Don't you see? You're attracting the one. No, Camille. We sell it. We don't get high on it. Speaking of, check your bank account. Why? What's in my... Holy Mother Mary of God, that's half a million dollars. And like the little shit amount I had before. That is the advance on your second book. That's my money? Not technically yet. If you spent it all and didn't give us a book, we'd have you executed or something. But all I need from you is to keep up your search for the one and write it down for a book. Oh, and Danny wants you to stay at his place when you're in Cincinnati. Camille, did you pimp me out? No, I told him you were going there next and he offered his apartment. Like an Airbnb, he won't even be there. I guess that's only slightly weird. Because you had sex with him twice and didn't give him your number. How do you know? Relax, I took care of it. We'll message you the details. Good luck with your new book. Jane stands in Danny's million-dollar downtown Cincinnati apartment decorated in neon signs, pinball machines, and other expensive toys. He's Tom Hanks from Big, a fucking child. How the hell does he afford all this? She picks up a card on the entryway table. Jane, thought you might be sick of hotels. Enjoy. Please walk Randy Macho Man Savage here and there. Thanks. Who the hell is Randy Macho Man Savage? Oh my God, you're Randy Macho Man Savage. Yes, you are. You just made me happy wet. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Speaking of. Jane walks Danny's dog in a grassy area outside. Go on, Macho Man Randy Savage. Go pee. Oh shit, you're about to shit. And there you go. He sure follows orders well. Jane turns to see Alejandro. Whoa, you're handsome. I mean, what? Oh, uh, no, I just realized I, uh, Forgot a bag. You're in luck. I have extras. Allow me. Wow, you are picking in on up. Really going above and beyond. Oh, well, mine's going to. No reason for us both to deal with it. If you think about it, it's pretty chivalrous. Romantic, even? That I don't know about. But a glass of wine could be. 
In Danny's apartment, the dogs lie on the rug while Alejandro takes Jane's pulse and they drink wine. Give it to me straight, Doc. I can handle it. I'm afraid you're in excellent health. Well, let's do something about that. Cheers. So enough about my boring old cardiovascular surgery experience. What do you do? Well, doctor, I am an author. Now that is impressive. I could never write a book. Oh, I'm pretty sure you could. Yeah, so that's me. Let's talk more about you. What do you write about? Human interaction? Like sociology? Sure, that. That's what I write about. Wait a second. The one. That's you. That's me. I haven't read it. Thank God. I mean, oh, okay. But it's huge, right? That must be how you can even afford this place. It's even bigger than mine. Well, I don't want to talk about money or... Daddy's home. That. Hey, guys. He's my roommate. Roommate? Yes, my roommate, who I have to go have a quick chat with. Jane hurries Danny into his bedroom. You're supposed to be gone. We played at home tonight. You think I would let Macho Man Randy Savage hang out by himself while I'm on the road? Damn it. Camille set this up. Is that a sex swing in the corner? Yeah. It's fun. You should try it with what's-his-name. I wouldn't even sit in it clothed for beer. I might get some sort of gene-eating super HIV, which I probably already got from you. Relax. I have the team trainer test me after every partner. That's disgusting. Actually, it's very responsible. How do you afford all of this? You really know nothing about pro baseball, do you? No, it's stupid. Why would I? Wait, are you rich? Define rich. Do you have $1 million? Uh, yeah. Two million? Yep. Get the fuck five? Yeah. You hit a ball with a stick! In front of 40,000 people a night and millions on TV. Okay, seriously, do you have $10 million? <laughs> That's a yes! Fuck! A lot of people are into baseball, like your book. My book helps people! But you said it's bullshit. That's beside the point. Why are we arguing right now? You should get back to your date. I got news for you, though. I think he's gay. It's not a date, and he's not gay. I'm a professional athlete, and he's in better shape than me. People work out! And gay people work out a lot. I mean, he is super handsome. I can't get a handsome guy? I meant he's extra gay handsome. And you can get this handsome guy right here anytime you want. Swing in your swing, pervert. Is everything all right? Oh, sure. We just had to iron something out really quickly. Iron something out. Gotcha. Let's discuss more about you being a super successful doctor. Danny appears with an empty glass and pours himself wine. You're a doctor. What an impressive job. Danny, don't you have to pack for your trip? Trip? Yes, he's taking a trip. Far away. So he needs to pack in his bedroom and go to sleep early and leave us alone. I'd rather open up a suitcase. Of conversation, Alejandro, is it? Do you work out? I mean, obviously you do. Look at those arms, even through a dress shirt. Thanks. I must admit, I have them tailored for a tighter fit. Tailored, huh? Interesting. Many men are into making themselves look nice, Danny. Just because you consider basketball shorts formal attire. Well, you need room for those thighs. Someone's not skipping leg day. You think they're starting to get some real definition? Oh, definitely definition. So did you win tonight? I was planning on watching, but I ran into the loveliness that is Jane. Big sports fan, Alejandro? Huge. Played baseball growing up. Shortstop. Middle linebacker on the football team. How masculine of you. We did win. Thank you for asking. That's very polite and courteous of you. Say, why don't you take off that tight shirt and relax? Sounds good to me. What? Ugh, so freeing. Wow, look at those abs. I mean... I'm a pro athlete. Psh, baseball, you've probably never even jumped. But those are so cut. Way nicer than mine, I think, but maybe we should compare. Danny, no one wants to- Yep, look at that. Your abs, absolutely beat by abs. Cheater. What? You are a cheater, Alejandro, at um getting with the ladies with those abs. They do seem to enjoy them. I knew it. Uh, come here. Danny full on kisses Alejandro. You can't kiss him? Oh, he's into it. That's pretty nice, actually. Never mind. I'm just going to have some wine, and you guys do your thing. I win. You certainly do. <laughs> oh, and that's your hand on my crotch. I'm sorry, Alejandro. I'm actually not gay. I just knew you were, and Jane wouldn't listen. Although that wasn't bad. You're a great kisser. Thank you, and I'm actually bi. Oh. Interesting. I've seen you around the building, Danny. Story you guys were making up about him coming home 
unexpectedly, I thought this was a, uh, we were all going to have sex with each other kind of situation. Huh. Put your hand back on my crotch. Yeah, I just can't get there. Sorry. Oh, I hear you. Jane, maybe we can go back to my place. What do you say, Jane? I'd love to, but I think I'm going to sit tonight out in the sex department. Fair enough. Well, I have my shirt off and no one to have sex with, so I think I'm going to take Henry upstairs and call it a night. Sorry we couldn't make it happen, bro. Just, um, hit me a homer when you get a chance. It might be a while. Not funny. Good night, everyone. Come on, Henry. So, Jane, you want the bedroom or is the swing gonna freak you out? You mean you two aren't a two? Oh, no. Yeah, she's not interested. Huh? That should be. Seems like a good one. That's not like a thing just because he says it is. I didn't say anything. In the dark, Jane and Danny lay on opposite sides of the bed. Do you let him sleep on the bed? If he wants. Macho Man Randy Savage. Come here, boy. Did he just jump in the sex swing? He likes the motion. Helps him fall asleep. So where to next? St. Louis. (laughs) You're kidding me. Who needs ticket? St. Louis and Cincinnati. Fuck you, fate. (laughs) Excuse me? No, sorry, not for you. Just cursing the cosmos. In a huge bookstore. Here she is, ladies. Here to announce her new book coming this fall. What? The two. What? Jane Willis. In a bathroom stall, Jane holds a prototype of the book The Two. The Two? What the fuck am I holding, Camille? It's a prototype for the teaser of the launch of The Two. Prototype of the teaser of the... I haven't even written anything yet. How can you choose a book that doesn't exist? Anything is possible if you visualize it, so I did. It's half the size of my actual book that I barely wrote. All the text says is blah, blah, blah over and over. Calm down, it's just a prop for now. You'll fill it with real words or whatever. The font is gigantic and it's half pictures of candles and scrolls and shit. It's beautified. We also included pages after each chapter for readers to journal. That's just blank pages. No, they're an opportunity for people to write their own journey. I'm holding a book I haven't written about things that haven't happened that's filled with filler to fill something that isn't even book-sized. Jane, calm down, all right? Breathe. Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Don't you use Drew's name in vain. Look, no pressure. Seriously, we don't even have to do the second book. Nothing comes before your (sighs) well-being. Thank you. But... If you decide to fall in love and want to do the book, sign the contract I just emailed you and the half a million in your bank account is officially yours. Your choice, though. See? No pressure. In her hotel room. Upon deciding to fall in love and committing the story to a second book, Jane Willis is to be paid an additional $500,000. So it's an decent proposal. One million dollars to fuck my soul. Jane looks out the window at the baseball stadium. Sports. I'll get my mind off things by watching some sports. And drinking from the minibar. And now Danny Freeman comes up. Danny, you're on TV! Freeman in a bit of a slump lately. Why'd you stop? Hit your baseballs to the music! Oh, wow. That is quite the bulge. Buddy, I know for a fact it is not that big. And you're just grabbing away. Dude, you're tying it in a knot. You're like a drunk sorority girl with a cherry stem. And the pitch. A hundred miles per hour? No wonder you got a little castle protecting your business. Surprised there isn't a bulge in the back of your pants now. Pitch number two, and a base hit for Freeman into center field. You did it! You're on a little white base! Yeah, okay, you're high-fiving the old guy, coach. And right back to yanking on your bulge. You gotta figure out that situation in private next time. You grab your bulge, I'm grabbing a beer. Final score today, St. Louis 4, Cincinnati 3. I did it! I watched an entire baseball game and drank a lot. Now what? Just call him, Jane. You're calling me. Calm down. You're the only person I know in this city. What are you up to? Looking at a bunch of dudes' dicks. Gross. What are you doing after that? I was gonna head back to my hotel for a little slap and nap, but then I had this thing. Slap and nap? Masturbation and that. I nap. I get it. What's the thing? Someone I'm going to see for a bit, no big deal. Someone you're going to see in St. Louis where you don't live. Yeah. You want to come? You're not having sex with a groupie, are you? No. Why would I slap a nap before? Just a no would work. No. It's pretty much the exact opposite of that. 
What's the exact opposite of sex with a groupie? Outside a hospital's pediatric oncology wing, Jane is frozen while Danny carries pizzas and ice cream. Come on, Danny. You don't need to try this hard. Child cancer ward? We can just go have dinner or something. I've been here a million times. I used to play for St. Louis. I always come when I'm in town. You really expect me to believe... Danny! Nurse Paula? So good to see you. You too. This is Jane. Hi. I'm a terrible person. She's kidding. She's quite nice. Once you get past some things. Nice to meet you. I'll see you inside. Ready? What do I say? How do I talk to them? I'm bad with children and presumably worse with dying ones. Don't say the D word. But are they going to not be on Earth soon? Some of them, maybe. But they're amazing. You'll see. Take my hand. Danny! What up? Who's that? This is my friend Jane. Nice. (laughs) Danny and Jane hang with a particular girl, Melody. Ten. Scarf on her head. Tell her what I said the first time I visited. He promised to hit me a home run. And he did? No. He fucking struck out four times. I was trying too hard. So the next time he just brought presents and puppies to play with. Bribery. That's when I got Macho Man Randy Savage. How are you feeling? Like shit. I got cancer. Is there anything we can do? Can you cure cancer? No. Then I'll take a slice of pizza. Who's the new boy over there? Steven. Been here a few days. I'm going to make him my boyfriend. He's all sad right now, but I'm going to change that. I'm going to take him away from all this. You know, Mel, my hair is getting kind of long. What do you think? Yeah, plus it'll help to do the you-know-what with you-know-who here. Excuse me? What you-know-what? Sex. Duh. Melody. (laughs) Too late. Hey, Steven. Danny has a towel around his neck as the boy, Steven, holds hair clippers. Now, you're sure you're a professional, right, Steven? No. (laughs) Well, I guess you got to start somewhere. All right, guys. Three, two, one. Right down the middle. How's it look, Steven? It looks stupid. (laughs) What do you think, Jane? Am I sexy? The sexiest. Jane and Danny, with his freshly buzzed hair, walk down the St. Louis Riverfront. It looks good. Very Natalie Portman and Beefer Vendetta. Used to be a big deal, huh? Kinda. Before I tore up my knee. Why I know the kids so well. I was rehabbing in this hospital. Then St. Louis released me. How I ended up in Cincy. Well, Detroit, Pittsburgh, then Cincy. So you got broken up with two? Pretty much. But you know, you see those kids? Melody? She's been in and out of there since she was a baby. It's hard to take your bullshit seriously next to that. Speaking of bullshit, who is this guy, by the way? Your ex? Who breaks up with you? You're awesome. Thanks. He didn't seem to think so. Then he's a fucking idiot. You're sweet. No, I mean, really. You're smart, pretty, funny, if maybe at my expense sometimes. I was bitchy to you at first. Lightly bitch-tastic. I didn't know you were Mr. Hang Out With Kids With Cancer. I bet he's kicking himself. Seeing how successful you are? I'm successful the way the inventor of Crocs is successful. I love Crocs. But then again, I have to wear something on my feet to shower around 24 disgusting men. So that's where the book came from? Your ex? I was normal, I swear. I worked in an office, and I was into inspirational quotes and yoga, but I was normal. After the breakup, I got really into astrology. I started smoking weed again, and one night, I'd had a bottle of wine and just puked out this Jerry Maguire-style mission statement about love on my blog. I forgot about it for two weeks, and then it got tweeted to me with 126,000 likes. Damn. And it was just, I'm in love because I say I am? So stupid. But this publisher emailed me, and they gave me money, and it was better than working in an office. But the book was this souped-up version of what I said, which was stupid to begin with. And anyway, here we are. I get up in front of these women, and I act like I know what I'm talking about, and I'm so full of shit. I'm surprised it doesn't come out of my ears when they hug me. I got thrown into my job, too. Started playing baseball when I was nine. It was fun, and I was good at it. Like, really good. Better than anyone in my town, in the county, and and Kansas. Pro scouts started showing up when I was 14, got drafted when I was 17. Then wasn't long before I was this guy, this adult man who'd picked his job when he was still wetting the bed. But you like it? The actual playing the game is cool. Kid fans are fun, but the adults, 
Everyone talks about winning so much and the money, which I haven't really found anything to do with. Except buy a sex swing. It was actually on sale. You should have seen the other items Amazon recommended. Got weird real quick. Forget the book. You are special. Why else would I make sure we kept bumping into each other? You did put your room across from mine. Maybe. You knew Camille set us up at your place. That was just you being naive. <laughs> I know words like naive, Jane. Was it because people kept saying it to you? No comment. I'm not mad. I'm kind of flattered. And I told you fate was bullshit. Come here. Danny kisses Jane. That's not bullshit. No, it is not. Back in Jane's hotel room, she and Danny are in bed. I've never done that before. You did that one maneuver and... I make my living off hand-eye coordination, so... And you're sure? It's not P. Then what is it? I don't know, okay? I'll go on WebMD later. Just... just wasn't prepared. I've eaten your jizz. I'll shut up. Can I hold your hand? Yes. I feel like we're talking with our minds. That's called the moment. It's nice. You're ruining it. You're trying to talk to me with your mind, aren't you? No. Now beginning our descent into Denver International Airport. Anything counts as the Mile High Club here, folks. Another crowded bookstore signing. Jane is beaming. Hi, how are you? Oh my God, oh my God, I'm so excited to meet you. And I'm so excited for the two. Your book has changed my life. Well, I'm so glad. And I'm excited to meet you too. So you found someone then? You know, I'm happy to say I have. That is, to see what you've been through and for you to be so strong is such an inspiration. Oh, I tell myself every day, Julianne, be more like Jane, damn it. Oh, well, don't be hard on yourself. To Julianne, always believe in you. I certainly do. Your friend, Jane. A fellow Jay, just like me. Oh, 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 oh. it's okay. Can we, does anyone have a tissue? At the Q&A. Inside you is a different you. And that you can get you to the you you want to be. And that you will find love. Make sense? Okay, who's next? Um, hi. And thanks for, um, uh, for being here. I I read your book. And then I read it again. And I guess, and sorry if this comes off wrong, but don't you find the idea of the one a little silly, much less being your own the one? I have to tell you, I used to be just like you. Questioning love and it all. But what I found in writing the book is that it taught me what I thought I was trying to teach other people. I'm happy to say that I recently met someone and they're great. Okay, uh, and I'm so happy for you. But isn't that just meeting someone? Isn't that just something that happens? I mean, what actually is this book telling us to do in simple terms in order to find love? Well, um... Are you here to fall in love or not? It's saying be your own one and you'll find the one. Let's be nice. We're all sisters here. Back at her Denver hotel room. I really should have made sure they were paying for my mini bar charges. Turn on ESPN right now. On TV, Danny dances suggestively. Danny, oh my God, you're an idiot. Danny Freeman is certainly enjoying his walk up to the plate. I think he's dancing, or at least thrusting. (laughs) There are kids in the crowd. (gasps) Wait, how are you texting? (gasps) Oh, fuck. Fuck. A ball of nerves, Jane rolls her suitcase through the Denver airport to the Chili's, too. Sitting there is Todd, her ex. The moment she has thought she wanted is here. Hey. Hey. You look incredible. Thanks. Todd pulls out her chair, fumbling to show humility. And then, a scene we've all lived. Talk of, I'm sorry. I was in a weird place. And other mumblings of contrition. Todd seems to get it now. Jane thaws. He reaches his hand across the table. She takes it. She's happy. But she knows what this means for Danny. After the game, Danny dances through the locker room in only a jockstrap. Dancing Danny coming through. Oh, shit. 
Denny, your phone. Gotta take a time out. The lady's calling. What's up, sexy, gorgeous lady? That's okay. Good news or... That's... That's not good news. C can we just talk? Welcome to Phoenix, ladies and gentlemen. It's hot. That's their thing here. No culture, just temperature. I don't know. In her Phoenix hotel room, Jane FaceTimes with Todd. I'm almost done. Las Vegas next. But that's not for four days, so I guess I'm gonna see the wonders that Phoenix has to offer. You should check out the Hyatt by the airport. The conference room is quite majestic. Yeah? I've been to all these cities, but they all look the same as far as I know. Hotel rooms and bookstores, except for, well, never mind. Why don't you fly back to L.A. for the break? We can spend time together. Yeah, okay, that would be nice. Is that a baseball game? Yeah. You watch baseball now? I guess I do. Well, I guess I have to get used to the new you. Danny Freeman will be out of the lineup for Cincinnati tonight. Yeah, I want to say our thoughts go out to him. His mother suffering a heart attack late last night. Uh, I have to call you back. Don't have any further details on the moment, but really feeling for Danny. Just a great guy, always with a smile. A rental car drives past a sign reading, Welcome to Selena, Kansas, home of Danny Freeman. Jane gets out of her rental in the driveway of Danny's childhood home. Danny sits on the edge of the porch, watching the sunset over infinite cornfields. Jane, you're in Kansas. I'm in Kansas. How is... Fine. Scary for a bit, but fine. She's, she's gonna be fine. I'm so happy to hear that. How are you? I, I'm kind of numb to think that she could have... But she's okay. She's okay, you're right. It's good to see you. Sit, sit. It's good to see you too. She used to pitch me batting practice out here. I'd get home from school when Dad was at work, so while the sun was still out... That's a great mom. Yeah. And she couldn't pitch for shit. <laughs> I was like nine, and it was hard because I had to be real patient, and you know... You were nine. Yeah, just a kid. Just wanted to hit. But it made me focus. Develop a good eye, wait for a good one. You see that window on the garage out there? Way out there? Mom threw a good one, and I just whacked it. And we looked at each other, and we both knew that there was something to me. Hitting a ball with a stick. Yep. Next day, I got home from school and went into the house to see if she pitched me, but she wasn't there. She was out back practicing. She got better for you. No. She always sucked. <laughs> <laughs> she was horrendous. Always. She would hit me constantly. I'd have bruises at school. Good thing it was the 90s. For real. Thanks for coming. Of course. I was kind of getting sick of hotel rooms again. You know, I gotta tell you something. In Atlanta, when I had the room across from you... I know, Danny. You picked the room. No. Not that part. I wasn't in town for work. We had an off day in Tampa. I flew in just for you. And reading your book didn't make me think about things you did. I don't know. I thought maybe I saw the right pitch finally. But I'm glad you found yours. As Danny heads down to meet his parents, Jane is left on the porch by herself. In a nice but boring L.A. restaurant, Jane and Todd have dinner. A polished couple among other polished couples. It's so quiet. Would you like me to tell you a joke? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. What is? What? Never mind. What if I just farted really loudly. Just let the biggest one ever fly. I don't understand. I was kidding. There's nothing to understand. Oh, cool. Jesus, this is all perfect. It is. And there's nothing interesting about that. I'm not following. Say or do one thing I wouldn't expect. Jane, come on. We're having a nice dinner. Let's not fight. I'm not trying to fight. I'm trying to... Live, I guess. Is this a book thing? Some mumbo-jumbo you're trying out on me? When you dumped me, you said we didn't fit. This is what you meant. This perfect puzzle. I wasn't the right piece. But you are now. But I'm not. I don't want to be a piece in a perfect puzzle. I don't want a perfect puzzle at all. Come on. We could be such a power couple. 
Jay-Z and Beyonce? <laughs> wow. You know, I thought you were such a dick for breaking up with me. But you're no villain. You're just a Todd. Goodbye, Todd. Jane gets up and walks away. What? Where are you going? Jane returns. This salmon is incredible. I can't waste it. Sorry. Goodbye again. Excuse me, can I get a to-go box? Thank you so much. Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada, everyone. Once saw a body bag in a Denny's here. True story. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the seventh annual World Empowerment Convention and Showcase. Fuck me. A just married bride and groom, see Jane. Oh my God, Jane Willis, the one. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Should I sign something or? This is you, our wedding. She read your book. I read your book and it really helped me. What? How? I don't know. It just, I needed something in my life. Something to shake me up. Tell me to get back out there and keep trying. And I did. I met Kevin in a grocery store. We had the same cart pattern. I decided to go up to him in Frozen Foods because I'd read your book. And now we're married. My book's only been out a few months. How long have you been together? Six weeks. But when you know, you know, right? She's the one. And so is he. I'm so fucking happy for you. Jane stops a waitress. Excuse me, can I get one of those free drinks I've always heard about? Are you playing the slots? And be one of those idiots who sticks their finger in an electrical socket hoping money falls out of their ass? Uh, no. The waitress walks away. Can't even get a free drink. A packed hotel amphitheater. Backstage, Camille lint rolls Jane. Since when did book signings become this? Whatever this is, how many people are out there? A few hundred. Like fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred? Who am I, the band Train? And I'm supposed to just read to them? Don't worry. I've loaded a speech on the teleprompter. Speech? More of a talk. Camille puts a TED Talk-style microphone on Jane, then wraps her hand around it. Shh, shh, shh. Hot mic the second I uncover this. Now, I didn't want to tell you this because my first thought was it would make you super nervous. But Drew Barrymore's people have reached out and this is your audition for an ongoing segment on her show. Now, I can see from your eyes bulging and instantaneous sweating that my second thought that you would be very excited and use it as motivation and not be furious at me for telling you last minute was correct. So get out there and have fun. Today, I want to talk to you about love, the most incredible feeling you can have in life. We want it from the moment we are born, our hearts fill, and once we have that taste, it's all we can think about for the rest of our lives. And that's why I wanted to give it to you, because I love you, even though you're strangers. I have love for you, because I was just like you, until one day I had an epiphany and discovered the eternal secret that has eluded mankind for so long. I can't do this anymore. The truth is, there isn't a one, some perfect person out there ready-made for you. That's a fantasy. There are many wonderful people out there, genuine, thoughtful, looking for connection, but also themselves. And they may not have found that either, and that might come across as them being annoying or weird or a douchebag. And it's hard, because there are actual douchebags and weirdos and assholes who will get in the way and hand out pain. But you simply need to keep searching. I thought my boyfriend breaking up with me was the worst thing that ever happened to me, because it was at the time. But without that, I wouldn't have written my blog, and this book wouldn't have happened, and I wouldn't have met so many interesting people, and one in particular that I hurt, because I was an asshole, because I hadn't found myself yet. But I think I have now, and all of this has made me realize that what I felt when I wrote my blog was true. Love is amazing and real, and it's out there, and you can find it if you just keep trying even if you look like a fool. But you can't wait on the universe to hand you love or anything else. You have to make it happen. And when it happens, you need to hold on to it. This book is bullshit. There's no secret to finding love. You live and you love and you get hurt and you learn and you keep going until you find the right pitch to hit. And then you swing. You can't buy that for $24.95. You gotta earn it. If this book made you feel better, great. But if you did anything because of it, that was all you. If a crystal or a book makes you get back out there and try again, great. But it's still just you. Excuse me. 
Jane takes off her TED Talk style mic and drops it. But it's still attached to her body, so she starts dragging it through the audience where Camila's in the aisle to intercept her. What do you think you're doing? You'll never be on Drew Barrymore. I don't deserve to be. Drew actually empowers women. Or maybe she doesn't really, but she definitely cares and is supportive. What about my half a million dollars? I'm giving it back. I'm not writing the two. There are more important things than money, like love. That's why we're doing this, to sell them love. Jane untangles herself from the mic and shoves it in Camille's chest. Love isn't ours to sell. This is over. Nothing is over till I say it is, Jane. Now get back here and sell this fucking bullshit. Hot mic, right. Well, ladies, let's summon a new spiritual path from within. In Cincinnati's baseball stadium, Jane runs out of a tunnel and tries to head straight down some stairs to the home team dugout. Excuse me, do you have a lower level pass? You don't understand. I came here all the way from Las Vegas so I could talk to one of the players. Oh no, you're on some astronaut lady driving across the country in a DAPA business, aren't you? No, 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 I flew. Danny Freeman. I broke his heart and now I want to unbreak it. Can you text him and say it's okay? No, but I can walkie-talkie the police. I prefer my idea. Now batting, number 19, Danny Freeman. That's his music. That doesn't change anything. Danny! Jane? See? It's okay, she can come down. Jane runs down to Danny. Why do I even stand here? Dude wants to get stabbed, or tased, or astronaut shit thrown in his face. Go right ahead. What are you doing here? I'm here for you. Yeah, I got that part. I'm sorry, I've been an asshole to you. It's because I thought you were a douchebag. I I mean, you really seem like a total... I get that part, too. But you're not. You're just simple. Um... No, I mean in the best way. You see the ball and you just hit it. You liked me and you just told me. And saw who I really was, before I even did. And you listen and you care and you're nice. I know this sounds fucked up, but I'm glad I got the chance to be with Todd again. You're really bad at apologizing. I know, I'm a mess. But if I hadn't been with him again, maybe I would have always wondered if there was something there, if that's who I wanted to be. But it's not. He fucking sucks. He broke my heart. I mean, who gets their heart broken by a Todd? And I was a bitch to you. Not bitch-tastic, a bitch. And I want to make it right. And dude, I have your schedule. I will show up at every game like a crazy diaper-wearing astronaut lady until you tell me I don't have a chance. So if that's the case now, just let me know. It's cool. I want to be with you. Really? That's it? Yeah, you fucked up, and you figured it out, and you apologized. And I believe you, so we're good again. I love you. I love you, too. Kiss me through the foul ball net. They kiss. Hey, the woman from that video is getting engaged. What? Look, you have half a million views. Love isn't ours to sell. Fuck, I did it again. No, 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 we're not engaged. Yeah, she's just apologizing for being an idiot. But I'm an idiot, too. Still batting. Danny Freeman. I gotta go to work. Hit me a home run. Danny walks up to the plate. A perfect pitch comes. He pops it up, and it's caught for now. Danny jogs back to the dugout. Fuck, sorry. And I have to keep playing. How long? Four innings. I don't know what an inning is. How much time is that? There's no time limit. That's stupid. People have lives. I'll text you when we're done. Okay, I'm gonna go to concessions. I'm starving. Your bulge looks great. I'm going in the dugout now. They share a smile. Welcome to opening day, folks. A new season and new optimism for Cincinnati. Gonna be a great year and it's a great day for baseball. Especially as it's take your dog to the ballpark day. Hot dog. Hot dog right here. Don't look at me like that, Macho Man Randy Savage. You don't even know what's in these things. They're disgusting. Gee, thanks, lady. How many? We'll take two, please. Danny comes back with cotton candy. Just make it three. He could get sick. I've seen him eat an entire pile of shit. He'll be fine. There it is. And thank you for making me question my occupation. You can keep the change. My first real game. Mine too. Looks cool from up here. I think I get baseball. It's nice. It is nice. So, what should we do with our lives? Let's have a kid. You mean me? I'd have the kid. Well, technically, yes. Technically? Um, that's a liberal use of that word. You don't think I'd be a great dad? You'd actually be a fantastic dad. 
But can we shove the baby up your ass for nine months? Working on the block, building up these racks. I'll be working for the fam. Here's a couple stacks.